The directions for this example are to write the expression as a single quotient with no negative exponents. So the directions there call our attention to the only negative exponent that we have in the given expression, and that's that one right there, negative one-half power. Now negative exponents mean if we were to push them down um, to the denominator, we could switch the negative exponent to a positive exponent if we take that factor and push it down to the denominator. So that's going to be one of the first things we do here. So um, looking here, we also notice that we've got a plus sign right there. And so we're going to see that we have two terms here in a sum, the term that comes before the plus sign, the term that comes after the plus sign. And so uh, we see also that the term that comes before the plus sign is relatively clean, 3 times 1 minus x squared to the positive 1 half exponent. But what comes after the plus sign there is rather uh, messy. And so when we're looking at this, um, I know that I have this... Um, 1 minus x squared raised to the negative 1 half power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push that down to the bottom, make it 1 minus x squared, this time raised to the positive 1 half power. And I'm going to see everything else that's left up there. Let's go ahead and multiply it out. So we have a factor of 1 half and a factor of 2 there. The 1 half times the 2 just gives us a, a 1. Um, but we also have the 3x and a negative x then left over. So the fact that we have that negative x factor tells me that I'm going to have subtraction here. So then we've got a 3x times, we've already taken care of that negative sign right there. So it's just the 3x times the x to take care of everything. So that would be 3x squared. So now we have uh, written the expression without any negative exponents, but we haven't written it as a single quotient yet. So we've got two terms. They're now separated by the subtraction sign. There's our subtraction sign. But um, we're going to have to combine those two terms. And the way we combine two terms when we're talking about fractions is we've got to get a common denominator. So the uh, term that comes before the subtraction sign is not fractional. At, well, I mean, we could think about it as over 1. And perhaps it's good to think about it as over 1. Um, because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be multiplying by a fancy form of 1 to get the right denominator in there. Uh, the denominator that we need is this denominator that's in the second term, the stuff that comes after the subtraction sign. So if that's the denominator we need, we put it there. But we can't just make a new denominator. We've got to balance it um, by putting it on the top too. And so what you see there is that 1 minus x squared raised to the 1 half is both on the top and the bottom. So that that I multiplied by is just a really fancy way to write 1. And so um, we do that so that we can then combine our fractions here. So we're ready to combine our fractions because when we multiply two fractions together, it's just really putting them together. Um, everything multiplies across the top, everything multiplies across the bottom. So when we do that multiplication across the bottom, it's just the 1 times the, the thing that we needed, the 1 minus x squared to the 1 half to put the correct denominator in there. Um, but then on the top, take a look at what's happening. We've got that factor of 3, but then uh, that 1 minus x squared raised to the 1 half appears twice. So um, what we have then is the same base. The base is 1 minus x squared raised to uh, different exponents, and they're multiplied together. Those two terms there are multiplied together, the two factors. And so we add the exponents. So the exponents are uh, 1 half and 1 half, so we add them together. That just be 1. And that gives us 1 minus x squared, um, now just to the first power. So what we do then is we take that and we subtract our uh, 3x squared over 1 minus x squared raised to the 1 half power. Um, so now we're ready to subtract because we have um, the same denominator. So we'll move to the next page here. I've just copied over exactly what uh, we wrote where we're ready to subtract these fractions. So when we subtract the fractions, we have uh, that common denominator is the denominator for the um, after we do the subtraction. And then what we do is we subtract uh, the numerator. So we've got the 3 times 1 minus x squared um, minus 3x squared. So we're getting pretty close here. It is a single fraction. Um, 
or a single quotient, we do have all positive exponents, but we could make the top look a little bit nicer. Um, so what I'm going to do to make that look nicer is I'm going to distribute that 3 across the factor uh, that's raised just to the first power. So that would be 3 minus 3x squared. And then I've got another minus 3x squared sitting there on the top. And of course, I can't forget about my denominator there, 1 minus x squared raised to the 1 half. So combining our like terms, um, we've got two different terms there that have x squared on the top. So we've got a 3 minus 3x squared minus 3x squared would be um, a total of minus 6x squared. And then on the bottom, we've got 1 minus x squared raised to the 1 half power. Um, technically speaking, if I cared, I could go ahead and factor out the common factor of 3 on the top because often um, what we care most about is the factored form of it. And so if I pull out the common factor of 3, I'm left with 1 minus 2x squared as the other factor on top. And then on the bottom, I have 1 minus x squared raised to the 1 half power. Uh, taking a look at the, that uh, ratio, we cannot reduce it any at all because there are no common um, factors that are on both the top and the bottom that would reduce out to 1. And so that would be our uh, cleanest factored final answer there for manipulating that expression.